Today I'm going to teach you how to make mashed potatoes. This recipe takes some time, but I think it is the best recipe out there. Hi, I'm Caitlin with Cooking with Caitlin, and today we are at Finley Market, Cincinnati, Ohio. Today I'm going to teach you how to make the best garlic mashed potato recipe ever. For this recipe, you need two cloves of garlic per potato. Just so you know, a fun fact, one clove is just one of these little things. A whole head, you do not need this much. Let's get cooking. Hi, I'm Caitlin with Cooking with Caitlin, and today I'm going to teach you the first recipe I learned when I moved to Chicago, mashed potatoes. You'll need just a few ingredients for this recipe. Some Yukon potatoes, heavy whipping cream, some great salt, whole garlic cloves, and some butter. For this recipe, we're first going to prepare the potatoes. I like to peel before I make them boil. That way, when they're really hot, I don't have to touch them. Because you're peeling it, you don't have to worry about washing the potatoes. Just make sure you get all the skin off. It's really important to use Yukon or Idaho potatoes when you're boiling for your mashed potatoes because every potato actually has a different purpose. Some potatoes are better for roasting, whereas some are better for baking and boiling. Once you're finished peeling the potatoes, you wanna make sure that you half it and then cut it into big chunks. You don't want to cut it too big because the smaller this chunks, the faster that it will cook. For this recipe, I like to do two garlic cloves per potato. So the ratio sounds like a lot, but it adds really great flavor. Instead of worrying about chopping it or getting that paper off, I like to pop it with the back of my knife. That way it'll crack open and all the flavor will go into the potatoes in the boiling water. Next, you want to fill up the potatoes with ice cold water. That's another important thing when you're cooking potatoes. You always want to start off with cold water and then bring it up to a boil. Now that the potatoes are covered, we want to turn the burner onto high heat and bring it to a boil. It'll take about 40 minutes on a high boil for the potatoes to be completely cooked. Another important thing is that you never want to add salt to the water because it'll draw the liquid out of the potatoes and make them super gummy. Luckily, we already have this pot of potatoes boiling and you'll know they're finished when you can stab them with a knife and they don't stay. They slide right off. Now we're going to drain the potatoes. Be careful not to burn yourself from the hot water or even the steam. Now we're going to introduce a new piece of equipment. It's called a Foley food mill or a ricer. It's an actual crank that pushes the food through these kind of grates right there. It gives it a very fine texture and it's great for mashed potatoes. Now you just want to scoop the potatoes and garlic into the Foley food mill. If you don't have a Foley food mill, you can always use one of those handheld ricer ricers. And if you don't have one of those, you can always use the classic potato masher. Now you just rest it on the pot and spin. Once you're finished ricing your potatoes, you want to make sure you get all the good stuff from the bottom. Now we're going to bring it back to the stove to add our cream and butter and salt just to make it a little bit better. Now that you're back at the stove, you want to turn on the heat to about medium again. You want to stir it around so that you can start to see the starch on the bottom of the bowl just to reheat it again. See little granules? There we go. Once it is completely reheated, you can start to add your cream. It seems like a lot, but it makes it that much better. For five potatoes, you'll add about two to three cups of cream. Once you add the cream, you want to keep stirring your potatoes. You'll see that the potatoes actually absorb all the cream. I like to alternate adding between the cream and the butter just to make sure that I don't add too much. I want to stir that in until all the butter is melted. You actually want to keep adding cream and butter until the potatoes kind of look like they're weeping. They kind of just fall off your spoon. Once your potatoes fall off the spoon like that, it's time to add our last ingredient, which is salt. The potatoes right now are pretty bland, so you want to add about two teaspoons to a tablespoon of salt. It'll really make great flavor, and then you can taste the garlic. We ended up having to use about a stick and a half of butter to get it just the right consistency. 
Thank you for tuning into this episode of Cooking with Kaylin. For more tips and tricks about making your side items really decadent, please check out cookingwithkaitlin.com.